It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Twilord. So this time for Pride Month, we get to address the hypothetical fandom ship that's probably helped more than a few Sonic fans figure out their sexuality. Sonato! A lot of straight fans had Rouge or Sally be their awakening, so don't throw stones. (laughs) True enough, true enough. (laughs) Yep. Shadow is not quite in a place where it's easy to imagine him having a healthy romantic relationship. But it is honestly a bit problematic to have one character shift until they're suitable for another, unless it's a mutual situation. How would you execute the character growth for Shadow and Sonic that would most help enable Sonato? There would have to be an understood vulnerability to Shadow. He would have to open up to a degree that makes him more accessible at a personal level. (laughs) And it doesn't take much. We've seen hints of it throughout his appearances it would just need to become established and from and that i think is all you really need to build that bridge because sonic is casual and accepting enough as he is and he's going to allow shadow to be who he is which is kind of prickly and standoffish it's just you would have the occasional moment where shadow lets his guard down and is more empathetic or emotionally available But otherwise, they would both play it fairly cool and aloof, I think. (laughs) Yeah, they're together. What of it? So, big deal. (laughs) I like it. There are obviously a lot of different popular ships in Sonic. In order to make one really stand out, you'd probably need to really spark intrigue on it before pushing the two characters together. How would you arrange the first key romantic spark that was intended to drive the fans towards wanting them together? I think it stems more from the characters already having good chemistry. I mean, you'd look at the fandom in general and the fleet of ships that are sailing, and all of them are based off of the fact that these characters are fun in their interactions, regardless of who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if it were an intention of building something from scratch, I for most of the Sonic cast, I think the work's already been done. There is already a great deal of trust and mutual respect between most of the characters. It would just be a matter of realizing that there is more than respect. There's more than kinship. There is a romantic affinity. And for one of those characters to make that realization and start to pursue it in their own particular way. And then it becomes a question of, well, is the object they're a fiction going to reciprocate And maybe they don't, which leads to an interesting story of now that they are on this path, now they know that this is an option, do they come around to it or do they not? Are both characters kind of interested, but they don't want to take that first step. And so you have that carrot on a stick that is ever so effective for however long you want to run it. (laughs) There's nothing that gets uh, Sonic's motor running more than being called a faker. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) Oh, he'll show you how real he is. (laughs) Oh, no! Oh, this is a family show, sir. (laughs) (laughs) With that idea fresh in our minds, how would you make it official for the two of them? God, if that ever came to pass <laughs> i feel like it would have kind of be kind of like understated like it would just kind of happen yeah, yeah. i i th- again they're both so cool and aloof in their own way i don't see them making any kind of dramatic declaration or suddenly turning all mushy and lovey-dovey that's not who they are no um i i you know, the adventure concludes and they're standing side by side on the hillside looking at the sunset and the wreckage and they share a, you know, a compliment and instead of like a fist bump or a see you next time and, you know, one of them runs off, maybe they throw arms around each other or something and just kind of stand there. Again, they're not going to be all me, 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 you know, tonsil lashing. It's, I see them just being very chill about it all. <laughs> Uh, also keep in mind everyone that this is just fan ideas this is probably never gonna happen it's very unlikely 
So we're just having These some are fun here. Medical situations that I am approaching as reasonably and as authentically as I can. Yes. Yes. Just to keep that in mind, just to keep everybody on the same page here. I am not endorsing. I am not unendorsing. I'm just answering questions. Yes. Everybody simmer. <laughs> Let's assume that for whatever reason, Shadow decided to seek out advice from the following, and whoever he asked had to answer with an honest attempt at the best advice they could offer. How would Professor Gerald, Dr. Eggman, the Commander, and Black Doom advise him? Gerald would be the most wholesome and effective, I think. I think he understands people better than certainly a lot of his family uh, and would advise Shadow to look inward, to ask himself what he really wants and to ruminate on that and then act with caution. You know, don't be hasty on this particular thing. Like all great research, it takes time to get the results that, you know, you want or the results that will come to be. Don't take anything as a given, but don't be afraid to pursue the truth, whatever that may be. Eggman would scoff at the notion and, you know, sarcastically offer to set him up on a date, making it quite clear that it would all be a, a trap and an ambush and whatever. The commander, I don't see as being a very romantic individual, but I think he might be direct about that. Right? He would say that his partner was someone that he managed to find for himself, but that was largely thanks to her and her efforts because he was kind of clueless about this, but shadow also is kind of in the same boat. So, you know, maybe at least be aware of your surroundings. If someone is prepared to make that gesture, be ready to receive it and understand it for what it is. How do you do that? He's not quite sure how he figured it out himself, but you know, he's not good at this sort of thing. <laughs> and black doom would, Again, scoff. Love is a weakness. It is a distraction at best, a malady at worst. It is an affliction of the mind, an illusion created by inferior beings to facilitate necessary natural pro processes. You do not need love. You do not need anyone. You are my ultimate weapon. Now go get me them chaos emeralds. <laughs> Give me those damn fourth Chaos Emeralds. They're all fourth. Honestly, Shadow, what's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love <laughs> but a second-hand emotion? <laughs> damn it. <laughs> uh, well, we all know Shadow can't resist a dying wish. Let's say that in the aftermath of a terrifying evil scheme, Eggman once more had to team up with heroes to save the world, but he died in the process, leaving Sage and her brothers in the care of his uncle and uncle-in-law. Assuming that if money were real, Gunn would pay the kind of money that would keep a classy act like Rouge on staff, so the boys don't need to change their heroics too much. How would they do as parents to Sage, Orbot, Cubot, and after a while, if she so chose, potentially Belle? I'm a little lost in the wording on who is acting as surrogate parents here. I, I think it might be supposed to be Sonic and Shadow, but Rouge is also there, I think. Well, I mean, someone would have to look after the kids because it ain't going to be them. No, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, or, or... Sonic would show up. For, Sonic would kind of show up for birthdays and events and to check in, but he's he's not the stay at home dad. He's not the stay in one place dad. He's Oh, okay. He's not the daddy. He's the daddy gets his steps in. If you catch my meaning. Okay. No. Okay. It was more an example of they're willing to pay Rouge, so they would be willing to also pay them, and so. But I guess Rouge would not be the caretaker, <laughs> so they would have to be the yeah. caretakers. I don't think it would go well. <laughs> Luckily, I think they're self sufficient <laughs> for the most part. I mean, I can't really see Gunn letting them off, entrusting them to anyone. They would be on facility. Yeah. But it would be Sonic and Shadow weighing in heavily saying, You're, they're not captives. They are not tech to be assimilated into the greater Gun network. They are wards of your facility, right? Yep. Right? Which, again, Sonic would be <laughs> checking in on occasion to make sure that it's going well. And maybe Shadow would kind of become a satellite agent of Gun just to keep tabs on everything. 
check in on the others to some degree, but we wouldn't have a case of my two dads on this one. <laughs> they're they're not the parental types. We probably shouldn't trust gun with child care. Probably not. Even robot children. And you don't even need them to be a pair to get the kind of bickering parental, conflicting parental guidelines in this scenario. Yeah, no. And Sonic would be very much, eh, let them stay up, let them eat ice cream, let them do whatever they want. And she's like, no, they need discipline. You're going to spoil them. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Worst fathers ever. <laughs> Belle, I, I can't, again, can't really see as a parental role, but I could see her as the put upon babysitter. She tries her best to, to look after them and keep things under control, but honestly, they're egg tech. They're not going to cooperate all that much. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess Belle would have to be the older sister. She'd probably end up being the one who does most of the work. <laughs> Uh, She's the one trying to stop the caper of stealing the commander's loafers or something. <laughs> Gotta get in trouble, you guys! <laughs> stop it! Stop! Uh, uh, Oi. All right. Shadow is immortal. He will probably outlive Sonic. Unfortunately, given Sonic's lifestyle, that may not be that hard. Although, given Shadow's first adventure, it could go either way. Sonic would probably understand that Shadow copes with things like this better when he has a sense of meaningful purpose to focus on. This seems like the type of thing Shadow would project onto his partner if it came to it. So what would each other so what it so what would each of their dying wishes to each other be? Morbid. <laughs> You're going for the beautiful sadness type of thing, I take it. Uh Sonics would be what he wishes for everyone is to be true to yourself and to live free. Perhaps that be true to yourself ringing a little more resoundly in shadow's case you know don't close yourself off again you know be free to open up to someone else again down the road and just be honest with yourself and be free to make that choice open your heart shadow it'll be all right it'll be all right <laughs> yeah. damn it <laughs> you would do that yeah i absolutely would <laughs> As for Shadow, he would want Sonic to endure, you know, to just continue to carry on, to not be defeated by anything, to find a way to escape death and just continue being, because you know, who else can replace him? Nobody. He, he would want that to endure forever. Yep. Good thing Sonic's got extra lives. So Sonic and Shadow have gotten engaged, and they're trying to figure out how to approach their family name. Would Sonic take Shadow's last name, or Shadow take Sonic's, each keep their own, or each add the others with a hyphen? Given Shadow's right to certain other last names, there could be a timeline with a Sonic Robotnik or Sonic Doom. <laughs> no, they, they'd go with their current surnames, and the as a sign of solidarity, they would just swap them, so it would become Sonic the Hedgehog and Shadow the Hedgehog. Right, okay, okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. As long as, like, Shadow doesn't take Maurice or something, we'll be good. <laughs> Sonic, the Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog, no relation. <laughs> we could hyphenate it, Sonic the Hedgehog, Hedgehog. <laughs> Don't make me regret my decisions. <laughs> Too late, he already does. He already does. Hmm. Sonic has, to, Sonic has a great found family, and presumably in order to get Shadow to a point where he could date Sonic, we'd be dealing with a much more Team Dark take on Shadow, who also has that. How would they both adapt to regularly hanging out with each other's found family? Uh, the Sonic side of things is always very opening and ex open and accepting, mm -hmm. and that's hilarious to the Team Dark side of things because you can take such advantage of that. I think there would be attempts made on Team Sonic's side to incorporate everyone into the big happy family, and eventually it would come to the understanding that, you know, there's appreciation, there is respect, but there also needs to be distance. It's okay that they only get together for, like, the holidays, and then they all keep to themselves. It, nothing against anybody. It's just you know, oil and water don't necessarily mix all the time. Mm -hmm. And that time Rouge stole all the Christmas presents. 
Knuckles <laughs> is still a little salty about that one. Oh, poor Knuckles. <laughs> I play a lot of D&D with my boyfriend. He's big into it and happy to have another person for his D&D groups. Meanwhile, I always enjoyed the little bit I got to play, but didn't get the opportunity as much in the past. He is, unfortunately for him, very much a forever DM for the group he has assembled. With his new little family we've assembled around the Sonato pairing, who would be their forever DM. Omega is a Warforged Barbarian, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, you mean in the game? I mean, he could be whatever he wants in the game, but in real life, yes. <laughs> I think he could make a case that he's Warforged Barbarian in every connotation of the word. Pretty much. Uh... <laughs> I can't remember how we, because I feel this like this ties into just general D and D. We've been asked this before. I would think Tails would be the DM. Yeah, yeah. Tails is Tails is the one who has the most uh, patience, I think, to really learn stuff. He, Amy, he maybe like to construct. The, maybe I mean, he would like to construct the campaigns. He would be the better rules lawyer between the two of them. <laughs> um, I think he might be a little more of a stickler than Amy. I think Amy would allow for a little more rule of cool, but I don't think Tails would be obnoxious about it. You know, yeah. if you roll a one and things have gone very badly, he'd be trying to help you figure out a way around it. It's like, you know, okay, this is a bad situation. What do you see around you that could stop you from being on fire? Or Amy, don't you remember you have this particular scroll of healing or whatever? I, I haven't played D&D. I don't know. I mean, I mean that exists. Yes, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you 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 got it. <laughs> he wouldn't be a rocks falls everyone dies DM, but he would be someone who's like, no, you can't fudge the numbers. You miss. How do you mean I miss? I'm right in his face. You rolled a two. What can I tell you? <laughs> he might think about rocks fall everyone dies for a second though. <laughs> Once it well, got fed up, every turn Omega's like, I kill everyone in the room. <laughs> Even the party? Yes. No, you can't do that. It is in character. I don't care. Mm. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how long it would take for him to get fed up with Monty Python references, but <laughs> probably not very long. Uh, and, it, and it turns out Monty Python is an actual Python comedian in their world. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I'm here for it. That'd be cool. <laughs> Time for the coveted Digimon question. I don't know who's coveting the Digimon questions, but all right. I guess Twilord is. Turn to the left, but all right. I guess Twilord is. <laughs> In Digimon, there's a concept of DNA digivolution, where two Digimon can fuse together. Sometimes, this phenomenon creates a mental link between the tamers and lets them glinch, glimpse each other's thoughts and feelings. This admittedly varies a bit, so you have a lot of creative freedom on your solution. Assume the two were closeted, for lack of it having come up yet. From those whose Digimon starters you might have, you might choose to have DNA digivolve with Sonic's or Shadow's partners, which characters figure it out from the basic mental connection and of them, how would they handle knowing without being told? I'm assuming that like they have not confessed their love for each other, but they right. somehow use this to figure it out. And really Digimon, it's not asking about the Digimon themselves. It's, it's acting as Sonic and Shadow are the trainers. Right. Tamers. Uh the hardest question in this is who is more obtuse between the two of them? <laughs> yes. That's the answer. <laughs> Shadow in general might be a little quicker on the draw. So he would make the realization and that might prompt him to open up. Whereas Sonic just already kind of took it as a given. It wasn't really a realization to him. So he didn't really think much of it. I guess. Yeah, I guess that kind of fits. I guess that fits. Once we were linked, I came to a realization. And, well, now that I know it's reciprocated, I guess I can say I'm really into you. Oh, yeah, I already know. <laughs> Everyone's into me. No, no, that's and not what I right. mean. You don't have a romantic bone in your body. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think the idea, apparently, I'm getting word that the idea behind this question was that uh, they haven't told anyone yet, and their friends find out this way. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Most people in Sonic's world are very accepting and everything, so I don't think it would be a big deal. Yeah, I mean, if anything... <laughs> The biggest reaction would come out of Amy. It might be shocked. She found out. <laughs> well, shocked at first, but if she found out and they hadn't really opened up to each other yet about it, oh, she no. would go hardcore matchmaker. Oh, no. <laughs> like, if they both feel that way and they aren't being honest with their affections, oh, no, no, no. She will not let that stand. No. She will move heaven and earth to see love realized. <laughs> Even if it's not Sonic loving her, I guess, huh? <laughs> Disappointed, sure, but, you know, fine. What she wants is for him to be open and true with himself and true with others. Yeah. Love is a powerful force in the universe, and she will see its will done. Yeah. <laughs> she is a true ally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I guess a that's true. Militant ally. <laughs> Kind of frightening. <laughs> Again, put down the torches and pitchforks. This is a hypothetical. This is for funsies. Let it be. Yes, let's have some fun. <laughs> Moving on, he's got a question for you, Kyle. All right. So in terms of romantic progression for fictional characters, you could say that after the rom-com where the parents get home together and the sitcom where they all have to live their lives together, can you please pitch me three episode ideas for the up and never coming sitcom, The Hedge Hogs, for me to rate? Oh, no. Uh, I didn't read this before we started. <laughs> so, I'm, 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 hmm, come up with these on the fly. Hmm. I'm like not great at that. Let me think here. Let me think here. Let me help you out with one. Okay. The Fast and the Furious. They both run out to get takeout quickly, and they deal with incorrect orders. <laughs> okay. It becomes a conflict of their personalities, where Sonic's like, hey, I'll take the pickles off, and Shadow's like, he said no pickles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, hmm. Hmm. God, I really am bad at this. <laughs> Oi. I feel like maybe there has to be one where they're like trying to drive somewhere and they can't decide they they like get lost and then one of them is like we don't need directions it'd probably be sonic sonic would be driving and yeah, he the and he refuses to ask for directions and shadow's like trying to get him to pull over and <laughs> ask for directions. Be late. pull over yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I mean that's a that's another trope of sitcoms. <laughs> Here's one for you. Surprise control. Sonic and Shadow are each, each trying to prepare a birthday surprise party for the other, not realizing that son of a gun they share the same birthday. No, they've never actually discussed this or put it together. <laughs> Hijinks ensue. Do they actually? No, no, no. Sonic Adventure 2 is like a few days before. But, you know, it's funnier if they do. <laughs> Rouge is the first one to figure it out, and she runs interference to make sure nobody clears it up for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Uh, let's see. Turns into a big blow-up where they're both angry that neither of them knew what each other's actual birthday was. And then the tension is broken when Omega pops out of the cake like Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to the two of you. <laughs> and then he sets off for the fireworks, which are actually just... No Omega not inside the house! <laughs> which is actually just more DACA. <laughs> uh, hmm. It has to be an apartment complex so Eggman can pull a Newman. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Sonic. Oh, Man. no. <laughs> I hear you've got the primetime cable package. Mind if I come in? The game's on. <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess it's fine. Come on, kids, he said it's fine. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 
I bought and <laughs> a few egg ponds. Uh, who's the Kramer in this situation? <laughs> Knuckles. Big the cat. <laughs> or no, okay. Exact same mannerisms. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> You know, mid conversation, you bust down the door. Foggy, Foggy, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh no! The episode where Shadow's parents all come over for the holidays. <laughs> all four of them. <laughs> Why do I have so many parents? <laughs> and now we shall air our grievances on this Festivus. <laughs> Shadow fetch the bowl. <laughs> Festivus is for the rest of us. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, terrible. I love it. I love it. All right. I think that's enough. That's enough. It certainly is. Happy Pride Month to all you celebrating. Be good to yourselves be good to each other and we will see you next time on the bumpcast catch you later everybody